Hello, everyone. It's time for Pan Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. This is episode 192, season 8. Today's date is January 17th, 2023. And welcome to the show. On today's show, I will talk about uh, Herman's World of Sporting Goods Stores in Chicago. Uh, these, it was a sporting goods store that... Um, they were uh, mostly located in the malls in Chicago, mostly in suburban malls, that is. Uh, I'll talk about my mem- a little history of, of that place and uh, my memories of, of that particular store. Also, I'll do a wrap-up of past posts of Van Chicago and uh, Facebook page uh, that started right after Christmas and until now. Uh, I've got quite a few to cover. Uh, right now... The program will go into a commercial break, and this program is brought to you by La Creme Whip Toppy. <laughs> uh, it's like Cool Whip. Oh, well, I'll get to that after the commercial is played. And here's a commercial from 1982, and uh, I've had this product. I remember it. It was very good. So sit back and enjoy, and I'll be right back. Thank you, everyone. Out here, you get used to the good, natural things, like the taste of real cream. Real cream. That's what makes La Creme Whip Topping different than those cool whip toppings. You see, La Creme is made with cream. They're not. And there's no mistake in that rich, real cream taste of La Creme. Buttercup, you did good. La Creme Whip Topping, from the dairy folks at Kraft. Real cream. Real cream taste. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for La Creme Whip Topping. I sound French when I say that. I remember this product very well. As I mentioned uh, before the commercial aired, uh, it was like Cool Whip, only it was made by real cream. It, was not, it wasn't non-dairy. Uh, it was the Kraft made this product. It was introduced in 1982. Yeah. Oh, about over 40 years ago. Uh, I don't know how long it lasted. Maybe about three years, three or five, and then disappear. I don't know what happened to it. Um, Why, what the reason was they yanked it off the shelves. (laughs) I guess uh, maybe it was false advertising. Maybe fell out of uh, flavor, favor. (laughs) So, you know, it was pretty good. Uh, cool Whip I still use. I still eat. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, everyone loves Ready Whip out of a can. You know, the, like one of guilty, uh, one of life's guilty pleasures is like you take a can, you put some on your finger and you eat it. Or you just uh, take the can and you press it and you put it down your mouth and down your throat and, <laughs> and indulge. <laughs> But you don't tell anybody. I never done that. <laughs> Who says I didn't? Okay. So that's another uh, product of the 80s that went to oblivion. Okay. At the beginning of the program, I said I was going to talk about Herman's World uh, Sporting Goods Stores uh, in Chicago. And then I'll do a, a recap of past posts on my Facebook page, Fan Chicago in. Uh, nothing personal I'll talk about today. Everything is fine. You know, uh, I'm doing okay health-wise. I'm still taking the Xtandi. That's the uh, d- new drug. It makes me tired. Uh, there are days I'm okay, days I'm not. So I guess I'm doing all right. So we'll see. Okay, so here we go. We're going to talk about Herman's uh, Sporting Goods Store. So I'll give you a uh, history of that uh, co- company and uh it was founded in 1916 in uh new york city and the man's name was herman steinloff and uh i think he founded i think with his brother it could be yeah his name was eddie steinloff and it was a music store at first it was founded in uh, lower manhattan then they then they expanded the chain and then they uh, expanded to uh, New Jersey. 
Then later on, uh, so it was not really a Chicago company. It was a New York company. But uh, someone meant, uh, somebody tweeted that on Twitter uh, this morning. I noticed that, you know, it's not a Chicago company. It's a New York company. Okay, fine. <laughs> but it had a it had a great presence in the Chicagoland area. And a lot of people uh, remember growing up and bought a lot of items there. And then... Um, and then it became a sporting goods outlet. Uh, I don't know exactly when. And then it was sold to a uh, company called W.R. Grace. And uh, that was that happened in 1970. And then uh, they expanded. And then the... Uh, but the, uh, the Steinloff uh, brothers, then they, they turned it over to their son, Leonard. He did not want to expand it to... What I mean is not nationally. He didn't want to do that. But the company, the conglomerate, W.R. Grace wanted to do that. So, so they, uh, so they said no. So that, and then, uh, so Leonard Steinloff became the CEO, but he was only there for about 10 years. I guess he uh, gave in and just ran, ran the co- and ran the company though then. And then it expanded to the Chicagoland area, which I remembered. And uh, one of the stores I remember that was located was at Fort City Shopping Center in Chicago, right where I used to live. And uh, expanded to other locations uh, in Chicago. And I found a newspaper ad in the Chicago Tribune of the locations there. And this is as of 1988. I'm sure there were maybe a couple more open but uh, this is the best I could do for the time being so I'll read off the locations and most were located in the malls so here we go so it was in Naperville Naper West Plaza uh, they did have one downtown uh, location and that's at uh, East Chicago Avenue and Michigan Avenue at near the Magnificent Mile and that's the photo I posted yesterday with the awning and uh, it's beautiful. I remember this when I went downtown a long time ago. I remember passing by it, seeing this. And there's an Arby's, and I remember the Arby's there uh, when I visit Water Tower Place. Also, it was located in Spring Hill Mall in West Dundee. Uh, it was at Six Corners. Uh, that's a shopping center in the northwest side of Chicago. Then that's like uh, Irving Park Road, Cicero Avenue, and Milwaukee Avenue when they meet. Also, Fort City, which I mentioned. Uh, Evergreen Park, uh, which is at the Evergreen Plaza. Also at Niles at the Golf Mill Shopping Center. Also Buffalo Grove at Strathburn Square. Uh, in Bloomingdale at 369 West Army Trail Road. I don't know if it's Stratford Square. Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, it's Vernon Hills at Hawthorne Center. And Lombard at the Yorktown Shopping Center at the mall. Also at Woodfield Mall in Schaumburg, also Highland Park uh, on 131 Skokie Valley Road, also at Orland or at Orland Square at, at the shopping center. It was located as well. Also in jo- in the Lewis Joliet Mall in Joliet, Illinois. Also at, on Skokie, it was on Dem- north of Dempster on Skokie Boulevard, and also in Madison in Lomans Plaza, not in Lincoln Mall. So uh, my memories of this store, I didn't buy much uh, sporting equipment there. A lot of people have, like, for example, maybe my brothers did. Uh, maybe they bought basketballs, baseballs, uh, baseball gloves, uh, hockey sticks, uh, camping equipment, uh, tennis balls, tennis rackets, you name it. They, they all, it was a very good store. I did apply for a job there when I was in high school. I didn't get the job, you know, but uh, I'm not into sports. Maybe, maybe that would have helped. So uh, any job I could get, you know, being 16, <laughs> that. And uh, there is a photo of her of Herman's on my in my group on Facebook. Uh, is Memories of Fort City uh, Shopping Center slash peacock, peacock alley you could find it there and uh so i don't know how long it lasted um fort city probably mid 80s 
or like the late eighties, and then um, then in nineteen eighty five, there was a company called the D Corporation from from England, and they bought it. They bought Hermans, and then they expanded. And uh, by by the early nine uh, early nineteen ninety eight two, there were a lot of more stores. So, uh, and then they filed for bankruptcy, you know, as usual, you know, how companies are, they, uh, go crazy with their profits and, you know, there's like going on in, in uh, you know, behind the scenes with owners and all that. And then, uh, they, uh, they closed some stores and then they couldn't uh they couldn't keep up and there was competition too um like for example there was uh, in chicago there was sport mart i'd like to talk about that someday also maury majors that's another uh chicago-based store i'd like to talk about that as well that would be fun and uh so but there the the headquarters of herman's was at cataract carteret new jersey and uh so as of 1996 it went defunct so they're gone so like that so you do find items on youtube uh, not youtube excuse me on ebay <laughs> you can find that uh, i found a few i found a hockey box you know hockey box and they had the herman's logo there are shopping bags uh sometimes jackets t-shirts and uh, all kinds of uh, items uh for sale it's kind of cool uh, I would love to find more photos of Herman's uh, in the Chicagoland area. That'd be nice. You know, so I could post it on my Facebook page and people would just go crazy. You know, they would enjoy that. Okay. All right. So uh, that's it for Herman's. And right now I'm going to, uh, but first I'm going to take a little break and I will talk about my past posts on, on my fan of Chicagoland page. So I'll be right back, everyone. Thank you. Okay, everyone, I am back. Uh, right now, I'm going to talk about uh, my past posts on my on my Facebook page, Fan Chicago Land. So here we go. Uh, this was from December 26 of last year, <laughs> and I posted a floor mat from the Magicus Carpet and Rug Cleaner Company. Uh, we all remember those red lips that were uh, was the signs on the expressways of Chicago, like for example, the Dan Ryan, the Kennedy Expressway and the Eisenhower, but I think the Dan Ryan was the best. And uh, this was an, a very rare product. I never saw, I found this and it had, they had the phone numbers without the area codes. <laughs> and this is before, this is the prefixes with the letters. So it was kind of cool like that. I love finding uh, items about that uh, for Magic Kiss. Uh, it was a good company, it really was. Okay, next up we have is, uh, I posted, I found this photo. It was vintage grocery items from a &P, you know, the grocery store. And they had uh, the 8 o'clock coffee. They had sale detergent, handy whip, the whip topping, <laughs> Ahoy uh, uh, dishwashing liquid, um, Ann Page, remember Ann Page? Uh, also, uh, Jane Parker, you know, products, you know, I, I don't know if I did a podcast episode by the a &P. maybe someday. I, I think I did, but maybe I'll do another one someday because uh, I had great memories of that store. And it was a great, uh, it was a good store, of course. Okay. And, okay, the next photo I posted, this was from December 28th of 2022, was, it was a photo of the Chicago L. And uh, and it had the sign, the Marshall Fields uh, department store entrance sign, in which a lot of people remembered uh, when Marshall Field was in business. And it's a cool sign. I don't know what happened to the sign. Did they? I hope they didn't throw it away. They should have just put it in a museum. You know, that'd be kind of cool. And when you get off the L, you would enter the store. And uh, some people mentioned that it would lead you to the china department of the floor i forgot which floor it was and uh so it's nice so if you're done shopping you know if you want to catch the train to go home or if you're arriving 
from the train, you know, you get off, you don't have to go to the first floor, you just get off the L platform and then enter in the store. It's kind of nice. It really is. And there's one for Carson's too. I think there was. Yeah, for Carson Perry Scott. Okay. Uh, next up was another photo from December 29th of 2022. It was a picture of a blockbuster video store, and this was located in Evanston on Chicago Avenue. Oh, this blockbuster. You know, and uh, uh, my favorite time of blockbuster was browsing. I love to browse. I would spend maybe an hour or maybe more looking at titles, uh, looking at, you know, the covers and all that. And I did rent, uh, there was a block, uh, I did rent from the store. It was, one was located near my old neighborhood, uh, at 87th Street in Cicero. I think it was hometown. It was in the old plaza. And I used to rent videos on it. I remember I rented about three. I forgot how much I paid. And of course you had to uh, watch them and then you had to return them. Also be kind, you know, be kind, don't re uh, please rewind. I think that's what it was. I remember on that. I think that's how it went. It's been a long time. <laughs> My favorite is like they have, sometimes they had titles uh, of that, you know, uh, of latest releases. Uh, I don't know if you could buy movies. I think you did. I think you did, but not not much. I remember the, the employees wearing the blue t-shirts, uh, blue shirts and all that. And, uh, they also sold candy up front, and uh, it was uh, it was kind of cool. I miss that store. I miss it. I love I loved it. I really did. Okay, uh, another photo from I posted this uh, was it was from 1964. It was on State Street, and it featured a CTA uh, bus route called the 149 State Liner Road, and that was like a shuttle service. Remember that, and uh, on this one, this is from 1964, and it showed uh, it cost like 15 cents to to use that route, and it would drive all around from the Loop. Uh, I think it was called before Michigan Wacker State or something like that. I don't, I don't know in that order. And I remember that uh, that uh, bus route lasted a long time. Uh, I don't know when it discontinued. Probably late 80s early 90s but a lot of people remembered this very well they remember the red sign it says shuttle service on the bus like that and let's see also uh i posted about uh the soccer player pele that he passed away on december 29th uh, he was in, in in he was 82 years old i remember in it was a, po a photo of him posing with the chicago sting soccer mascot uh, he was a wonderful soccer bear, player. Oh, wonderful. He play he was great, you know, from Brazil. And uh, so that's a shame about that. And let's see. Um, not much creature features. Uh, uh, one on December 29th of last year, uh, they featured The Bride of Frankenstein. You know, that, that, show, that movie's been repeated many times. Sometimes, most of the time, uh, on that show, and uh, it's one of my favorites. I, I love, I love the movie, of course. Uh, well, actually, my favorite is Dracula uh, from Creature Features, but Frankenstein, I like it. It's it's okay, but Dracula's the top. I love that. And third was like Wolfman, and then the Invisible Man, you know, and all, all from Universal. Next up, I, po I po uh, posted a photo, excuse me, of the entrance of the Animal Kingdom Pet Store. That was located at 2980 North Milwaukee Avenue. There was some controversy about this photo because uh, you, you either loved this place or you didn't. Uh, the reason that a lot of people didn't like it is because it was cruel to the animals, which I agree, you know, but that was a different time back then. So they wouldn't open. If you had a pet store, I don't think they would showcase or, you know, put uh, pets to entertain. They wouldn't do that. But uh, it was, uh, it was, that store was phenomenal. I received the book from the uh, manager of the store, which uh, I did read 
a little bit. I gotta I gotta finish reading it because I feel guilty because <laughs> it's got photos and it's the history and uh, so far I love it. And uh, one of the most famous animals that came out of that store was Chalveston the duck, who appeared on Ray Rayner. Who Ray Rayner fed blood us, and he chased Ray Rayner all over the studio, and he bit him. <laughs> I gotta do. I gotta do a podcast on him. That would be. That'd be great. Okay, and uh, let's see what else here. Um, then I post. I found a photo of Pop and Fresh Pies, which now is Baker Square, and this is this was located on Lagrange Road in Orland Park, Illinois. I still love this sto- uh, restaurant. Uh, there are about maybe three or four in Chicago left. I went to one about a couple of months ago in Woodridge, near Downers Grove. I went there for lunch. The food was good. The pie, I ordered the French silk. Awesome. Oh, I love it. I wish they opened more. I wish they reopened them, but I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen. But... I remember when Pop and Fresh opened, and the advert it was heavily advertised on TV, and it just took off. And people loved their they loved the pies, they kept the type uh, the pie tins, you know. Remember the signs that showed the the flavors, and then if they I think I believe if you, they turn over the sign, it would say sold out. I remember that, and that was a good uh, concept, <laughs> but. Uh, the food is good. It's okay, but the pies are awesome. Everyone loves it. And there's a big demand around Thanksgiving for pumpkin. Also Christmas, or I think, but Thanksgiving is number one. So, we met, you know, so if you want, if you have a, a craving for French silk or any pie, you have to drive to these locations. I think one's in Woodridge, the other one's in Palatine, and the other one's at, uh, in Chicago, Foster and Harlem. You know, if you're in that area, so that's uh, that's a shame because there was one near. There were two in Orland Park. Uh, the other one was on Harlem Avenue, and there's one near my house in Alsop, and that one closed. So that's a shame. And there was one in Lagrange, um, in Lagrange, the suburb on Lagrange Road. So that's. Uh, I hope it comes back. Let's see what else. Uh, then I found a picture of Lytton's department store. This one was located on the corner of Church Street and Sherman Avenue in Evanston, Illinois. It was a wonderful store. It had uh, beautiful clothes, uh, women's and men's. And, uh, of course, it's famous for their downtown location on State Street. And there was one in Oak Park, I believe. I don't know where else it was located. Uh, I don't think in Oprah. I don't think so. No, but uh, it, it was uh, founded by uh, Henry Blitton, I believe. That's his, that's man's name. And uh, I think I bought. I think I bought one item one time, a tie, uh, long when I was a kid. I think my mother bought it for me, and it was a beautiful tie. And uh, it went out of business. Uh, in the 80s, late like 87, 88, right around, around the time Weebles went, I think, I believe so. So uh, that's a shame because it was, it was a great store. It really was. And it had quality clothing. It really did. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, uh, here's a photo of, uh, this is from Fort City Shopping Center. And it was, uh, do you remember, it was iLab? Where you, it was like, uh, you know, like Lens Crafters today. And uh, also, a picture next door to it was Peaches uh, Records and Tapes. And also, next door was the Fort City Bank. And this is from ni- in the 1980s. And it was kind of cool seeing that. Uh, I remember Peaches from, the, from Fort City. I shopped there maybe once or twice when I lived in the area. I never got glasses at iLab, and you know, believe it or not, I never had an account at Fort City Bank, but a lot of people did at the time, and uh, that was nice. That's kind of cool. It really is. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, I this one was very popular. 
this post. This uh, I posted on January 7th. It was a photo of the Zier store. And this was at 5601 South Cicero Avenue in Chicago, where Midway Airport is now. And uh, I've been to Midway many times. You know, I picked up my brother. I've uh, flown out of there maybe once. And because they expanded it. And I remember the story. This uh, used to be Shopper's World before. I think it was another store uh, after that. I don't remember. But I remember this uh, this Zare store. I remember seeing it when I was about a eh, teenager. And uh, it was big. and uh, But this photo was real cool. So I posted that, and it's nice. You know, I missed the store. I read the, the Zare store, which one uh, that I shopped or my mom shopped, was at Columbus Avenue uh, in, in Chicago. Uh, right near the double drive, the double drive-in theater. Excuse me. And there was also the Wiseway Grocery Store. And my mom shopped there as well. So that was that was a nice store. That one opened in 1964, I think, something like that, around there. Okay, and let's see. Uh, the next photo I have is the Black Hawk Restaurant. I'm gonna talk about that someday. That was located at 139 North Wabash Avenue in Chicago. And it's famous for their spinning salad. I've never eaten there, and I wish I did. And from what I understand from people, like my followers, they love this place. And they went there for lunch. It wasn't that expensive. Yes and no, but it was the food was good. And uh, I found this photo, and, it's, you know, with the L next to it, it's kind of nice. You know, they, they miss this place. I think they opened one or maybe they moved. I'm not sure exactly. Or they opened another location, Wheeling, up north. Uh, but that closed as well. I, I don't know when the Black Hawk uh, restaurant closed exactly. I'm not sure. But if I do a podcast episode, I will do some further research and I will tell you. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Ah, here's here's one of my favorites. I found a, here's a photo that was provided by uh, a man named uh, Bob Jeske. His grandfather, it was Carl Jeske, and he was the operator of the Bob's Roller Coaster <laughs> at Riverview Park. And it's a photo of him displaying his earring collection there. <laughs> so what, in the old days, when women rode the roller coaster, and they go up and down, you know, and... Uh, he would find the earrings on the ground and then he would um, place them on a tray or on a box or somewhere. And uh, it was like a, like a lost and found in a way. So if you happen to lose an earring, you would go to Carl and he will show you and then you can go and try to find your earring. I'm sure it's happened. I'm sure people, have, I'm sure the women have found that, uh, found their earrings, but others were on claimed so his grand according to his grandson he still has the collection he still does he still has it and i thought it was kind of cool because uh, his grandfather was the operator of the bob's roller coaster i posted this on my social media accounts and it just uh it, it was great because people loved that roller coaster I don't know if they did that sort of thing with the other roller coasters, like, for example, the Flying Turns or the Greyhound or the Flash. It was the Silver Flash and the Flash. That was the Jet Stream. Um, I can't think. The Comet. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> no idea. Okay. Okay, now next one we have is I found a menu from the Ground Round restaurant. And this menu is from a location from Norwich, Illinois. It was located at 4220 North Harlem Avenue in Norwich. I so said that twice. <laughs> and, you know, people love, remember that restaurant? They had the, you throw the peanuts at the sh uh, on the ground. It sounds like the pickle barrel. Also, they showed old movies, uh, like old silent movies, but their menu was good. And uh, here's the menu. I don't know where it's from. It's probably in the 70s. So they had uh, cocktails. They had uh, 
like for example the hamburgers ground round junior steak sandwiches uh, they had fish fillet jumbo frankfurters you know uh hot dogs jumbo fried shrimp fried chicken drinks by the pitcher you know uh, i'm talking about not coke i'm talking about uh, <laughs> uh i'm talking about like beer or cocktails like uh you know like bloody mary's whiskey sours harvey wall bangers do they drink do, do people drink that anymore harvey wall bangers i don't know you know they also had uh side dishes and uh also desserts, of course. They had happy uh, happy hour, of course. And, you know, uh, let's see what else they did. They reserved rooms for uh, birthday parties or any event like that. Uh, the the nearest Crown Round restaurant for, by me, where in my own neighborhood, was on 87th Street and uh, East of Cicero. I'm, I remember seeing it, but I never went inside. I never had the opportunity to go. That's a shame, you know. So that that's that's bad. <laughs> you know, I kick myself. I wish I went there, but I didn't. You know, and uh, that's a shame. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, I think this is the last one. Uh, I put an ad for Salerno cookies, but this one was the Royal Stripes and the Royal Grams. Those were uh, the Royal Stripes were my favorites. They really, I love the butter cookies. Uh, I love the Bonnie shortbread. Uh, what else? I like the uh, coconut bars, but the Royal Stripes, the striped cookies, mm, delicious. The Royal Grams, I think I've had them, but now Keebler makes them, I, or they have, you know, for the for years. Uh, I've had them. They're not the same as Salerno. They're good, but not quite. Not quite. Salerno were the best, you know. And uh, of course, the Salerno butter cookies are still made. Uh, it's not the same from what I understood from people. I haven't bought a box in a long time. Sometimes they're expensive, but they don't have the t same taste. Uh, a lot of people complain that. I think they're right. They're, they're not the same. You know, when you put the cookie on your finger and you eat at the edges, or my favorite is dunking them. That goes, that sort of thing. Okay. And let's see what else. Uh, I think that's it. I believe so. No, I have one more. Uh, I posted a photo of the of a sign from the Evergreen Shopping Plaza. Evergreen Plaza. And uh, this was before the Evergreen Tree. You remember that? If anyone lived on the south side or lives on the south side, remember that? Uh, some people said it got knocked down by, uh, by wind. I don't know why. Maybe it was from the tornado in 67, maybe. I don't know. And this photo shows the sign at 95th Street and Western Avenue. And on the in the background was Lawn Savings. Uh, there was a bank. I think I think later on it was Concordia, Concordia Federal Savings. I think I said it right. I remember that. And then on the right was a high low high low food store. It was uh, I, have a, I have another picture of that, and uh, that was kind of cool seeing that because I miss high low. It was a great store. Someday I'll I think I talked about it. yeah I believe I talked about high low in a podcast episode. Maybe I'll talk about it again. You know with the with the high low flyer with the red wagon or in the ten cents uh, cans. You know, they, they were on display right up front. It was a good store. It really was. It had a lot of locations. Lots of locations in Chicago. Okay. And I think that's it. Yep, that's it. So uh, so that's it for this show. Uh, I'll do, uh, I'm going to do a quick recap of what I discussed. I talked about the uh, Herman's World of Sporting Goods Stores in Chicago and also did a recap of my past posts on Vanish Chicago Land Facebook page. So uh, I will do another podcast uh, probably this, this coming weekend. And uh, I'll think of something what to talk about. And uh, once this podcast is available, it will be available wherever podcasts are. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, 
Breaker, Overcast, uh, Audacity. I'm sure it's there. And uh, also on my YouTube channel, Ben Chicago and Stories. Uh, that will be all be posted this afternoon. And I'll also be posting on my social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Reddit. Uh, also on my blog, Van Chicago Land blog. I'm also on Mastodon. I joined that. Uh, not much activity there. So we'll see. So, yeah, because a lot of people still ask me, where do I find your podcast? Uh, can you send me the link? And I, I do send them the link, you know. I wish there was a way to, on Facebook, I could send them the link. They used to do that, but they, uh, Facebook yanked it. It's kind of silly. wish they brought it back. Okay. So this is your... This is Pico Steinish, your host of Vanishing Online Stories. Thank you for joining me. I had a good time uh, talking to you. And I hope everyone has a good day. So bye-bye for me. And here's Ray Rayner with a little traveling music saying bye, bye, bye. So take care, everyone. So long. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>